Greetings once again, it's Pastor Creed coming to you for this week's Sunday School Overview. This week we will be in Lesson 3, uh, Trap and Release, Daniel. So we'll be going over Daniel 6 uh, this week in Sunday School. So let us begin with God's Word. From Daniel 6, It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps to be throughout the whole kingdom, and over them three presidents, of whom Daniel was one, to whom these satraps would give an account so that the king might suffer no loss. Then this Daniel became distinguished above all the other presidents and satraps, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. Then the presidents and the satraps sought to find a ground for complaint against Daniel with regard to the kingdom, but they could find no ground for complaint or any fault, because, the, because he was faithful, and no error or fault was found in him. Then these men said, what shall, We shall not find any ground for complaint against this Daniel unless we find it in connection with the law of his God. Then these presidents and satraps came by agreement to the king and said to him, O King Darius, live forever, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the prefects and the satraps, the counselors and the governors are agreed that the king should establish an ordinance and enforce an injunction, that whoever makes petition to any god or man for thirty days, except to you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the injunction and sign the document so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be revoked. Therefore, King Darius signed the document and injunction. When Daniel knew that this document had been signed, he went to his house where he had windows in his upper chamber open towards Jerusalem. He got down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, and he had done, as he had done previously. Then these men came by agreement and found Daniel making petition and plead, plea, and plea before his God. They came near and said before the king concerning the injunction, O king, did you not sign an injunction that anyone who makes petition to any god or man within thirty days except to you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The king stands fast according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be revoked. Then they answered and said before the king, Daniel, who is one of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you, O king, or the injunction you have signed, but makes his petition three times a day. Then the king, went to, then the king when he heard these words, was much distressed and set his mind to deliver Daniel, but, and he labored till the sun went down to rescue him. Then these men came by agreement to the king and said to the king, Know, O king, that it is a law of the Medes and Persians that no injunction or ordinance that the king establishes can be changed. Then the king commanded that Daniel was brought and cast into the den of lions. The king declared to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve, continually deliver you. And a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his signet, and with the signet of his lords, that nothing might be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting. No diversions were brought to him, and sleep fled from him. Then, at break, at break of day, the king arose and went in haste to the den of lions. As he came near to the den where Daniel was, he cried out in a tone of anguish. The king declared to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to deliver you from the lions? Then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lions' mouths, and they have not harmed me, because I was found blameless before him, and also before you. O king, I have done no harm. Then the king was exceedingly glad and commanded that Daniel be taken up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no kind of harm was found on him because he had trusted in his God. And the king commanded and those men who had maliciously accused Daniel were brought and cast into the den of lions, they, their, their children and their wives. And before they reached the bottom of the den, the lions overpowered them and broke all their bones in pieces. Then King Darius wrote to all the peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, Peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree in all my royal dominion. People are to tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God, enduring forever. His kingdom shall never be destroyed, and his dominion shall be to the end. He delivers and rescues. He works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. He who has saved Daniel from the power of the lion. So this Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
And so we see here in our lesson for this Sunday <clears throat> a trap and a release uh, from uh, Daniel 6 uh, that our law gospel aspect here is that our enemy, the devil, pursues us like a roaring lion, uh, trying to destroy us and separate us from God, as, as, uh, first Peter, as Peter writes in, in his first epistle, um, that, that we're always in conflict with, the, with uh, our enemy. We're always, uh, he never rests. He's always there. He's always attempting to drag us away from the true God. And too often we succumb to that and he succeeds. Um, but the gospel is that God delivers us from the attacks of the devil, the attacks of the evil one. He rescues us by sending his son Jesus to do the rescue. He is the one that takes us out of the lion's den that is this world and shuts those, the mouths of those, those that attack us so that no harm can befall us. And that's the biblical truth, the Bible truth for this lesson, is that God rescues us from danger. And so if you want a, a short memory verse for this week, you can go to Daniel 6, verse 27. God delivers and rescues. That reminds us that it is God who does all of this. Now, as far as our confirmation, our catechism connection goes, we can turn to the first commandment you see here on your screen. Uh, the first commandment, you shall have no other gods. What does this mean? We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. And so we can, we can think of that and we can remember that, uh, you know, what, what Daniel did. Um, he feared, loved, and trusted in God above all things, even to the point of his own life being threatened. Uh, he, he feared God more than he feared uh, the vicious lions. And that's the way our faith should be, that, that we... Uh, do not want to anger God. We have a, uh, a respect, a love for God uh, so much that we would uh, never deny that love or, or anger God even when faced with, with bodily harm because ultimately our bodies were all going to give out. They're all going to perish. We're all going to die. But our souls, that eternal life that we have with God is precious. And we don't give that up for earthly gain or, or earthly uh, ease or protection or for the, uh, to avoid pain and suffering. And so when we look at this lesson, we understand that Daniel's faithful service to King, Gar to King Darius while he was in ex exile, um, it, it, it re resulted in his promotion to one of, one of the three presidents, as they call them, of Babylon. Um, almost being promoted to, to over all of it. There were political jealousies, and the other leaders convinced Darius to sign a decree that everyone must only worship him. But Daniel feared love and trusted in God above all things, and he stayed true to God, praying to him three times a day. Uh, then when the jealous leaders you know, they brought these accusations against Daniel to Darius, Darius reluctantly had to, uh, to go through with it. He was, uh, painted, had been kind of tricked and painted into a corner as well. And so Daniel is thrown into the lion's den. But God shuts the mouth of the lions. He protects Daniel through all of this. And Daniel remains unharmed. Darius acknowledges this then, the power of the true God to all the people. He, he puts the decree out to all the lands and all the lands that he, that he had control over, that Daniel's God was the true God. And it's striking, you know, even though he remains a pagan God, there's no, uh, there's no, no indication that, that Darius... Came, you know, started following uh, God, he recognized true power uh, when he saw it. And he recognized it in, God, in Daniel's God, in our God. And so, as we go through this, uh, this lesson, our identity in, con in connection to this lesson, that you know, God has rescued us from our worst enemies, from sin, from death, and from the devil. And so there, we, we are free from fear. And so because of this, we're called to live boldly, trusting in God to protect us from harm and serving God no matter what dangers may face us, no matter what lion's dens lay ahead of us. We can fear, love, and trust in God above all things. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that we're never going to suffer, that, that we're not going to face consequences of, of staying true to God. Now, this world is growing more and more hostile towards Christians, and we understand that. But we remain true to the truth. To God, and so 
we need the, you know, the Bible truth, God rescues us from danger. And so when our kids leave this lesson, the young kids, I want them to know that God keeps them safe. That it is God that keeps them safe in everything that they do. For the older ones, they can understand that God rescues them from the dangers and from the devil. Maybe cite some examples of how God rescues them from the devil and his traps. And relate how God rescued Daniel uh, from the lions to how God has rescued us from sin, from death, and the devil. So I hope this, uh, this short little overview helps you in your study and your preparation this week. I hope that uh, you had a blessed Christmas and you're consistent continue to enjoy your time off if you do have time off um, to be with friends and family and um, thank you for all that you do I know it's a busy time of the year so thank you for devoting your time to your church to the children of your church uh, it's much appreciated by by me and by the, by the parents here so thank you for all you do and I will see each of you on Sunday have a blessed week mm-hmm.